So this is a video. It's not a. Uh, it's it's motion. What? It's so this what this this looks like some futuristic device. What what is this thing? What does it do? Well, um, it, it was originally beamed to Earth from somewhere they think near Venus, and it somehow they had the wrong coordinates, and it ended up at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, and then there was a mass whale uh, death, die-off, and the investigators of the whale die-off found this. Wow, it looks like the, like the, the, uh, the Necronomicon. What's the Necro, you know, that book that of the Book of the Dead? Oh, the, well. The I, necro, necrophilia, no, what do they call it? The, <laughs> necro, I, well, ne necroman, not necromancer, no. Well, necro means dead, but. But I, remember the Book of the Dead, the, uh, like the, the evil dead, dead and the evil dead and and uh, Bruce Campbell. You know Bruce Campbell? You don't know. I don't you know don't know Bruce, pop culture like I do. Well, I don't know but Bruce you, Campbell. Is this, why is there a record? Does, does this play records? Well, that's what it turns out. This, you know, this was found uh, in the wreckage of the Poseidon and why it ended up there, God knows. But they had the wrong coordinates. I think they thought the Poseidon was still afloat and this ended up at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. And, so... Can you turn this on? I mean, it will it play will it play music. It will not play music. Why you put a record in it then? Well, this this is uh, remarkably good at cleaning records, and uh, why so why why what is that a thing? It's a thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it's a thing for a lot of people. Okay, yeah. interesting. Okay, so can you can you push it? Can you I it work? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's see how this. Thing. Is this, so, this is schmancy. I'm gonna. Well, this one's already clean, so I. Oh, just, so I'm find gonna, a dirty record. I'm gonna take that. While you're out. finding a dirty yes. record, I'm gonna go look, show people this view. Okay. Look at this. This is Lake Union, right? Yeah, Lake, Lake Union. Oh my gosh. There is the Space Needle. There's downtown Seattle. How beautiful is this? Why clean rec? Oh, do you sit out here like smoke cigars and drink cocktails while you're cleaning records? Okay, what are we what are we cleaning, Doc? So this is this is uh, I I don't know how many I think I've got to look online, but oh, it's a kaleidoscope. David, yeah, it's on the kaleidoscope records, but it's not but by it's, the band kaleidoscope. Yeah, but it's David Grisman. David Grisman, the mandolin guy. player. Man, yes. And he had uh, Lazy Dog or what's dog what's the record company? Dog music. Or? Dog music in Oops, in I'm, San Rafael. Like this. I've already started it. So, um, well, that's loud. It is loud. Oh, and it's going to get louder. Well, why don't you have like a humdinger? Is that quiet? What's a humdinger? Oh, the humdinger is the one oh, that's $400, $500. $500. Does this automatically clean and dry? This will clean and dry. Yeah, so does the humdinger. Well. See, now they're, they've come out with cheaper Chinese uh, knockoffs. Well, that may well be a good deal. Um, I, I, I'm i thinking of getting, making like a plexiglass case that would just fit over it and hold the sound in, because it does make a lot of noise. But, um, yeah, I have had this type of cleaner. This is my third one. My first audio desk system uh, glass uh, cleaned 4,000 records. 4,000? 4, 4,000. My second one cleaned like over 5,000 records. And this one's... How many records do you have? Eh, more than that. So... Wow. This Well, this one's now 1,000. It's in about 1,000. So... So, and they give you a, a deal on a trade-in once the first one breaks. So, it's not so as they're, expensive. So, they're as guaranteed to eventually break. <laughs> well, my, I've had two that eventually broke, so I don't know what that tells you. But each one, they, they keep making improvements, although they haven't fully uh, quieted it. It is still quite noisy. It ices, it dices. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, can I show this everyone this? I, I know this famous photograph. Yeah. Art Kane, yeah. famous photographer. Yeah. Uh, look at this. This is the Harlem 1958 jazz portraits. Yeah. God this damn. Was, that was shot for Esquire magazine. Uh, Duke Ellington. And, oh, man. Duke, Duke is not in this. Who's in the front right that there? That is Coleman Hawkins. Oh, Coleman Hawkins. Yeah. Never mind. I didn't recognize that his hat. It's, there's a lot it of is, um, people. Yeah. So, oh my God! Here's Basie, Polonius Monk, uh, is it Art Blakey, the pork pie hat. No, pork pie is um, is Lester Young. Lester Young, right? 
Um, I know my jazz shit. And you're, uh, you're, you're on top of it. This is uh, Jerry Mulligan, Dizzy Gillespie, obviously. So they let, the, they let a white guy in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah you know, oh, a few, there's, there's, there's a few. Gene Krupa, there's, there's not very many wow. white guys, but. There, that is, uh, this is, uh, this, wouldn't it be great to have an original photograph of this? Oh, I know, it's oh, so cool. God. Anyway, yeah. thank you for the tour. Yeah, there you go. All right, take care. So, Doc, let's talk about music. Look at this view. Before we talk about music, look at the, how beautiful this is. People right now are watching in, in Norway and Australia and New Zealand and Manchester and Birmingham and, and Turlock, California and San Jose and Los Angeles and Santa Monica and North Carolina and Raleigh, which is North Carolina, <laughs> and Atlanta and New York and New Jersey. So, cheers. Cheers. Thank you for the invite. Cheers. And cheers everyone from all those places. We're here on the deck over Lake Union. You don't know who this guy is, so I think he should introduce himself because uh, the vinyl community needs to meet Dr. Robert here. So, a little bit about yourself, your music, your record collection you know you, you don't have a channel yet do you <laughs> no i don't What's that finger thing yeah, I, well i just you know i know that, it kind of that's kind of creepy it's, okay no it's, it's, no, it's, it's creepy. not this it's is creepy. this is dude let's be friends that's what that means that's creepy yeah well okay so uh go with it who are uh, you so uh, yeah uh, my actual name is bob hart and i am a spine surgeon here in seattle and uh, I'm creating a handle on the vinyl community uh, on YouTube um, with with the uh, you know the the cover name Dr. Robert. And I, I, if I may, you may explain you can, Dr. Can, Robert. Can I explain it? You can do whatever you want. Well, I'm, I'm, you know, you're, it's your it's your thing. So uh, it's appropriate now because the Revolver box set just came out. Yeah, and it's on Revolver that? in the UK. It's not on Revolver in America. Oh, man. On the original. It was on yeah. yesterday and today. Yeah, yeah. I knew different, it mix, out different mix. Different yeah. mix. Well, there you go. So, um, yeah. Well, it is a great song. And so, you know, look. First of all, my name is Robert. Second of all, I am a doctor. What, what a and, coincidence. And so there's a personal thing that Dr. Robert, yeah, okay, why not? And, and then um, it's a Beatles tune uh, that is a really fun Beatles tune. But apparently it was about uh, maybe a dentist that uh, kind of was, you know, made, made narcotics available to people back in the mid-60s. Now, I used, to, I used to know these stories that's by heart, they, too. It, it that's was, what it's supposed to be. Yeah, but there was that story of George Harrison dentist. His dentist uh, spiked them all with acid was that not at a party. Robert? I, I, think I that, may have that been could Dr. have been. Robert. It was yeah. George's dentist, and on the way home they were, got stoned, and they had a they jumped in a field, and <laughs> after that they were. I think it was their. I don't know if it was their first acid trip, but it's really shitty to spike someone when, you, when you're not. Oh, yeah, totally yeah, right. Is... We're gonna take a little break just to look at this view. Look at this. Amazing. I just think this is this is so beautiful. I mean, this is this is a perfect night in Seattle. It rained yesterday. It's going to rain tomorrow. It's going to. But right, isn't this great? Are you asking me? Yes. Well, no, no, well, no you're I, the only person here. Well, I thought you know you were maybe. Okay, now continue kind of with your story yeah. about. Uh, I am riffing. That's yeah, what I do. Yeah, I know. I know. I have been buying vinyl since I was in seventh grade, at least, and I, you know, I even had some stuff before that. I think my first records, honestly, were like Partridge Family records, but I didn't buy those. That was like I tugged on my mom's sleeve and I said, "Would you please buy me this record?" And she did. And uh, I think I love you. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah. Who didn't like the Partridge Family? The Partridge Family were cool. You I know? think I'm a was a, as much as I kind of liked them. I was a little old. I'm about what five, six years older than you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And so they were a little kind of hokey for yeah, me. Yeah, I hear you. Well, for me, man, you know. But I like them now in the pop sense. I well, get it. Yeah. but how cool would it be to have a mom who's like the leader of your rock band and drives you around in you know this. Uh, uh, psychedelically painted school bus that was all of our upbringing right Look, enough about the partridge family I, you know I, 
I uh, so I started collecting records myself, or I mean, buying them myself uh, in about seventh grade, and uh, I have never stopped. I've just never stopped, and uh, and actually, it's probably accelerated lately. But you're a, are you mostly you're an OG guy, not a reissue guy, mostly. Well, I'm putting a toe in the water of reissues, but um, but yes, I mean my uh, my pre I have always been an original pressing guy. And, you know, but times have changed and you got to shift with the times. And I'll tell you, you know, and I think I've, I've said before to you, uh, Mazzy, I mean, the, the, the environment has changed. So it used to be that, you know, the original pressing, first of all, you know, it's the original pressing. And so that's kind of collectible in that sense. It's interesting in that sense. And, you know, you can argue, well, you know, the... It was what the uh, what the musicians wanted at the time, presumably, if they the artist original the creation. artist original creation, and and they had to sign off on it in some form. Well, or not always, right? Sometimes it just was label dictated just or sent production. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. They didn't get a final vote, but like Tommy James and the Shondells, for example, with stuff. the mafia backing yeah, them up. Yeah, right? exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's. Uh, you know, it was a messy business. It was a business, and so it didn't always have artistic, you know, freedom or artistic integrity. But it was, um, you know, it, it 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 just extends. I mean, so many, you know, it 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 informs so much about American life. I think is one of the things I like about it. And for me, I was growing up in a small town in Iowa, and. Vinyl records were one of the things that really opened up the world to me in a way that, you know, it wasn't going to happen in anything that was happening in my hometown. You know, and, and there were a lot of wonderful people there, and my I still have family there, and I loved my childhood there. But um, records opened up the world to me in a way that otherwise would not have happened. You know, I think that's what's great. We've There's been a lot of discussion. There's some live streams and discussions about the vinyl community. And... What I've found, I, I feel very fortunate because I have a handful of friends still. Some are dropped, unfortunately. Some are still around. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Sorry. That's okay. Oh, no. I'll reach uh, here. No, some, some are still around. Here, I'm going to put it in my left but, hand. That's okay. <laughs> some are still around. But so I have a lot of friends who are into music, into records that I associate with. Coffee Dave here. Um, you now here. But, um, you know, my friends in the Bay Area and around the country. But... The vinyl community has brought, there's a lot of people that I've discovered, I didn't really think about it before the vinyl community, that don't have anyone at, in their hometown or that they can physically go to. Maybe they you know, have a job and people kind of know they're into records and think it's cute and quaint that they're into vinyl still. Oh, that's a, still, that's a thing still, people will ask? I'm sure you get that as at work. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Right. But, but through the vinyl community, through the live streams, through these videos, we've met some amazing people that we have friends virtually and occasionally we meet each other because you and i met about a year and a half ago right absolutely you accosted me you stalked me at a record show this video is going to be a fan you, you might be a fan favorite eventually like coffee dave and the archivist and uh i guess there's there's others uh, people don't remember coffee julie who owns the three cafes up here you haven't met, have you met yeah, Coffee Julie? Well, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't remember who met who. Yeah. yeah uh, but it's, um, social, that, it's, you know. it's been a fun, it's a fun, um, fun thing. So this is an introduction. Now, uh, this video did have a bit of a clickbait title to it. It said, A Conversation with Dr. Robert, in parentheses, The Beatles Revolver. <laughs> <laughs> Because of Revolver, Revolver sells tickets now. It gets views. Please subscribe. Tell people why they should subscribe to my channel. When you have a channel, I'll link them to it. But you don't have a channel up yet, correct? Yeah, no, no, I don't. Uh, and um, let me, before I give you uh, Mazzy's address, and you should subscribe to Mazzy's channel. <laughs> well, they're already here, obviously. Let me, let me, though, make a disclaimer. In using the name Dr. Robert, the you know the handle Dr. Robert. It does not mean you can approach me for medications, and not just pain medications, but any medications, any doctor advice. No, sorry, but um, having said that, I will say again, 
you gotta subscribe to this guy's channel. He, he, you know, uh, it's he. He just is a fountain of information and uh, mostly factual. <laughs> and if not, I make it up, right? Yeah. Well, and even the made-up stuff is. But I do get dyslexic, and I reverse yeah, I things, and people call me my shit, which is fine. I agree. Um, I agree. I don't know. I, I you know, it's the life. This, of... this is a reaction shot now. <laughs> You can keep talking. Yeah. No, it's the life of an educator. You know, not everything you say is going to be believed by the people you're trying to teach. So, you know, what can you do? I, uh, you, you are well-intentioned, which at the end of the day is maybe the best that any of us can offer. Yeah, we, we try to, you know, we want to share music. That's what it's about. We want to share the, the music we love, the records we love, of course. Yeah, you know, I love to show the artwork and obviously the... It's the music stupid thing I didn't invent. I just adapted it from the Clinton campaign. It, you know, it's the economy stupid. Um, and it is about the music. Yeah, we like good pressings and we like well-recorded records, but not everything is well-recorded and not everything is a good pressing, but you can still enjoy it. I love the cover art, like the photographers, the illustrators, the designers, uh, all parts of r the making and the enjoyment of records. And uh, I'm not a huge gearhead. I do thank you for turning on to, turning me on to that toaster thing you had at the beginning of this video with that record stuck in it. Oh, oh yeah, the, to the toaster off the bottom of the ocean from the Poseidon. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. What kind of gin is this? This is, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's either a white whale or blue whale. It's a blue <laughs> it's whale gin. Our, yeah. Okay. But it's a new gin for me. I usually I've never I, heard of it you know, in my I love entire Hendrix. life. I love Hendrix. Is this a, 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 a boutique local gin, or well, is this a... I don't think it's local, but it's a little It's boutique. not a London uh, dry no. gin. Yeah, no, it's not that. Let me go so get the bottle. The doctor's going in to get the bottle, and uh, I do want to thank you. This is just a hang. I don't expect to get a lot of you uh, watching this if you got this far. But look at this view. You can't deny how beautiful this is. I mean, the Pacific Northwest is wonderful and this is a beautiful night on lake union in seattle oh here we go we're going to see the bottle here yeah well i have big news I have, I have big news so it's a blue bottle with white writing on it but the name of the gin is what ray whale <laughs> it is not a blue whale that's whale logical whale. yes well now we're sorted it out. i'm going to dinner with two other doctors which is bizarre so I don't think I've ever had dinner in my entire life with three doctors. Uh, thanks for watching Vinyl Community. Click that uh, subscribe button, click the thumbs up. Once Dr. Robert starts a channel, I will introduce uh, you to him, hopefully. Uh, we'll do a whack-a-mole together and everything, but thanks for watching. Mazzy loves you, right? Absolutely. What's we're gonna head out now, but what are you gonna clean here? So this, I, you can know, we see the cover? Yes, uh, yes. This is a. You're not allowed to cut a Frisco unless you're a native. Oh, well, but he lived there for a while. Oh, but he was yeah, not. Yeah, no, he wasn't no. native. It was from St. Louis. St. Louis, right. and at least at some point. So yeah, he. I mean, he has all these kind of travel log records. He's got from St. Louis to Frisco. I've known musicians who played with him because he would show up at a city with his guitar and never bring a band, so he would. You know, because everyone knows Chuck Berry songs. He'd hire a drummer and a bass player, right. and that was it. Let's just say goodbye. Uh, to, uh, you can talk. No, I. So, uh, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, this is the record cleaner. Again, brought back from the bottom of the Pacific Ocean off of the wreck of the Hesperus. Okay, the Hesperus. Okay, the Hesperus. The wreck of the Hesperus. That's where it was. Now it's time for true function.